the implications of each one. And remember, if you don't choose the identity properly, I can guarantee that you're going to run into some uh, uh, OPC problems that can cause you some some headaches. Anyway, uh, let's go on to the uh, um, to the specific user uh, to the specific identity. We'll begin with the interactive user. That's the person that's logged on to the computer at this time. That's the person that's physically using the computer, that's physically using the keyboard. Now remember with terminal services, it's actually the person who is logged on to the, uh, on, onto the local console. So it's a little bit of a special case. Uh, here's the problem. Somebody has to be logged on. Otherwise, the server will not start. So if you've seen it before that um, uh, you're able to connect to a to an OPC server, but suddenly uh, the person logs out and and the, and the OPC server stops, or there's a reboot and you can't connect to the OPC server, it's probably because the OPC server identity is set to launching user and remember somebody has to be logged onto the computer at, at that time so for the server to actually start uh, we don't recommend that you use this option unless unless the vendor very very specifically tells you use that option otherwise we really don't recommend that you use it let's move on to the launching user that's a person that, that that's the person that actually started the server or launched the server uh, here you have to be very careful because the operating system actually tries to um, initiate a new instance of the OPC server for every single user that's actually starting that OPC server and that can this can be uh, pretty dangerous and here's here are the common problems uh, the first class of OPC servers these are uh, these are the servers that come from companies uh, like uh, like Capware or like Software Toolbox or CyberLogic, um, Canary Labs, and these particular companies, when they make their OPC servers, they actually do not allow a second instance to run. And so the first user is able to connect, but the second user is not able to connect because, again, the operating system is trying to start a new instance of the OPC server, and the OPC server is effectively saying, oh, look, I already have an instance. I'm not going to start up another one. So the second person will actually be refused. As soon as the first person terminates their connection, the second person will be able to get the connection. What's interesting is that if the first person says, oh, gee, I forgot to get some information from the OPC server, and they connect again, they will not, they'll, they'll be refused the connection because, of course, the second person has the connection. The second class of OPC servers actually allow you multiple instances. Um, there are other companies that have these kinds of uh, servers, and you have to be very, very careful with those because there would be multiple instances of the OPC server um, running at the same time. So if user 1 connects, uh, the OPC server will, run, uh, will start an instance. If user 2, 3, 4, if there are 10 users connected, there will be 10 instances of that OPC server running on the PC. So you have to be very, very careful with that because, of course, number one, performance can seriously decline. But second, uh, and in my opinion, a more serious problem, it might compromise the control network performance because all of a sudden you have 10 different connections to a PLC or to a DCS and that, uh, that can seriously impact the control network performance. As a result, we don't recommend that you use this particular option, unle again, unless the vendor very specifically tells you that you have to use this option. Just keep these particular problems in mind. This user, that's another server identity, and uh, very often uh, we see recommendations by certain, uh, typically by DCS vendors. Uh, here are some examples. Um, in their case, what happens is that the OPC server has to run as a very, very specific user. And the reason is that they are actually very, very tightly coupled to their uh, data source. So their data sources are actually expecting a very, very specific user to, um, to get data from them. And in essence, what they say is, oh, gee, I don't have this uh, particular user asking for data, and therefore I will not provide any data. So they have to use this user with a specific username and a specific password. This isn't good or bad, it just is. That's the way they work. 
and that's what they require for their uh, for their security model. The problem is with data subscriptions. So if you're connected from a remote PC to an OPC server that's running with this user as a user identity, the callbacks or data subscriptions actually come back with this specific user that the DCS company, in this case the DCS company, set. And uh, if that user is not recognized on your PC, that callback will fail. As a result, you'll see that uh, synchronous calls are working. Synchronous calls include um, connecting to the OPC server, browsing that OPC server is also synchronous, and, um, and even telling it what items to get data from, uh, that's also a synchronous call. And you will be able to do synchronous reads and, and synchronous writes, but data, um, data subscriptions will actually fail because they use callbacks, and when the data comes back to you uh, with this specific user, with this user, um, your computer will, um, uh, it, it, they, they will fail the authentication because you may not recognize that user, and the callbacks will fail. So uh, how you overcome it is to add this user, the user that uh, these guys set, you add this user to, your, to the OPC client PC. Um, again, we don't recommend that you use this option uh, unless the vendor, such as these, uh, such as these companies, explicitly specifies it. So, if they're saying you have to use this user, go ahead and use it. But otherwise, uh, don't use this user. I don't recommend that you use it. So, you're not allowed to use interactive user. You shouldn't really. I shouldn't say not allowed. You shouldn't use uh, the interactive user, launching user, or this user. What's left? Well, the only one that's left, of course, is the system account. And the system account can only be used by OPC servers that can execute as a Windows service. And if it's if a server if a server is not uh, set up to be a Windows service, uh, that that particular option we will be disabled, as I showed you in the dialog box um, a few slides back. In any case, uh, here the server has to execute as a service. The good thing is that it can run completely unattended, so nobody actually needs to be logged in, which means it can start uh, immediately after a reboot. Um, it runs as a system account, which is the operating system, which is uh, recognized by every application. And there's only one instance that, that will actually run. So this is really what you want to set, and this is what we recommend. So unless your vendor specifically tells you, no, don't use system, use another setting, we highly, highly recommend that you use the system account server identity.